So I've got to bang this out quickly. Let's go. So number one thing. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. So much to get through. Number one thing to get through. Number one thing to get through. Number one thing to get through is this, right? And I think this is absolutely hilarious. And I'm only laughing because of how much, like for instance, like it doesn't bring me a lot of, hmm, should I lie? Yeah, let's lie. It doesn't bring me a lot of joy to see that the comedy mothership isn't following any of these guys, right? It brings me no joy whatsoever to see that they're probably at home. It's eating away at them. The fact that this is not, they're not followed by the comedy mothership and they haven't booked them yet. And there's no indication that they're going to be on that show anytime soon. Or so at that club anytime soon, it probably eats away at them. They don't even get, you know, I was even thinking about it the other day. When's the last time Brendan O'Brien's been invited on tour on the road with flipping Joe Rogan? It's really bizarre. This happened. I think we mentioned it prior when we watched that short chronicles that somebody for the fire and the kids subreddit made and it was a sh- podcast they did on joe rogan's platform but it was for the fire and the kid you know he does that regularly he does it sometimes with fear of Vaughan or with tim dylan where when they're recording his show he'll just do it back to back and just record theirs and just do it in his studio but he hasn't been on their show in many years and i know it must have eat the way at them because they hold this guy up on such a high pedestal he's probably more important than their wives and their children it's absolutely cringe it's ridiculous really in the big scheme of things but i know it eats away at their soul i absolutely know it it's also funny when us as viewers can see the fight companion stuff isn't the same right the vibe is a bit different they're not the same and you know some of us can you know use our discernment and figure out that you know all those allegations of rapes against brian's name brendan essentially going to war with one half of the la comedy scene with these conflict with annie and kalila and bobby lee and the fallout from that hasn't helped how connected or how close they are with joe because joe is a consumer Com- comedy guy right he's the one that's you know he's trying to bring everyone together he's trying to create a little community he doesn't want people being like crabs in the barrel mentality or just snapping away at each other or hating each other he kind of preaches the gospel of abundance and there's no scarcity in gigs and all this sort of stuff so he probably doesn't like the fact that brendan you'd imagine it probably doesn't sit right with him that brendan in a very short space of time has caused a lot of division within the comedy scene just by his pure just by his presence alone how he's come up in the industry and just his horrible horrible personality at times so it's no surprise when we see the fight companion happen and joe rogan's left and moved to austin that's not the same they don't click the same they don't vibe the same so when we hear them or brendan or joe say yeah we're gonna do another one we're gonna do one on another date for leon edwards and flipping kamara Usman fight that's what we're gonna do right you're like hold on this is making sense this, this was this previous one we just saw brutal to get through how are they going to now suddenly do a new one? Doesn't really make up or doesn't really add up in that regard. And a lot of people, again, I have to give credit to the Fire and the Kids subreddit guys. All those guys on there were spot on. They were calling it from the jump. This pod is not going to happen. The fight companion won't happen. It won't happen. It won't happen. It won't happen. Because usually if it's International Fight Week, like it is for the Kamara Usman and Edwards fight, I think it's number three, right? Then that fight coming up, right? For Kamara Usman to try and get his lick back from Edwards. Usually when it's International Fight Week, Joe Rogan doesn't go. So that's usually the times that they'll do the fight companion because he stays home. But it looks like it's not happening. (laughs) And you're probably the kids, so many guys are right. This is a clip taken from the end of the short show. No, so some sections of the short show from the fight of kids. But again, I haven't seen the whole thing. We're going to go over it later. But look at this. It's not happening. And I'm absolutely shocked. And the lie that Brendan says and how he tries to talk about it, it's clever. But also you can tell it's a lie because of how flipping um, Chin cackles, how quickly Brendan blinks and kind of short circuits when he hears him cackling, but just steamrolls through the lie anyway. Let's watch this. Leon Edwards, Kamar Usman going down for the main event. Fight Japan and Rogan is not happening. Uh, uh, Jamie has a, some golf thing he has to do, and my family's <laughs> doing some stuff for my B-Day, so it just did not work out. So we're rescheduling for the next Fight Companion <laughs> in Austin, Texas with Joe Rogan. We might do a Fight Companion here at Thick Boy. We're trying to get the team together now. Keep you guys posted, but enjoy the fights either way. I'll post on social media or announce Wednesday I'm finding the kid if we are having a companion on uh, Saturday. So we'll see. I'm going to be a little bit redacted here. And I'm going to read too much into a 30 minute, 30 second clip. But did you notice in this 30 second clip, the cackle from Chin, Brendan blinking and doing that kind of like dismissive, uh, Jamie's got some golfing going on. My theory is this. My theory is that Joe Rogan bullshitted him and lied about why he doesn't want to do the fight companion and basically used Jamie as a human shield. They all do this, right? They don't really like to own up or fess up to what they want to do. Brendan with the DA cancelling his gigs in San Francisco. Um, you know, Brian Callum blaming his flipping daughter for the fact that 
that's why he deleted all those pictures of Chris Alia on his profile when Chris Alia got what was was initially accused of diddling kids and stuff when it really was him getting nervous that his Hollywood career was going down the pan the same way and of course karma bit him in the back and the next following week he got accused of all the rapes which was flipping hilarious so then they all like to use each other as human shields my theory is Rogan used Jamie as a human shield and lied about the golfing because everybody knows if you've listened to Jerry Jamie um, Vernon the producer young Jamie is super into golf he loves golf, right? He loves, loves, loves golf. So he used him as a human <laughs> shield to say that. And Brendan didn't believe it. He thought Joe was bullshitting him. And if you remember clearly from that sound clip or from that voice note that Mark Harley, a.k.a. BGO, a.k.a. Hella Mark Harley, a.k.a. Mufasa, when he shared that clip of Brendan talking about the Alex Jones encounter they had at dinner, what did Brendan say when he first came on that microphone? Oh, I didn't even get a chance to promote my dates, right? So clearly, you know, the relationship between these guys isn't what they kind of make it seem at to be on, on camera. They all see Joe as just a promo bump thing. He's not really their friend in that regard. They don't really, you know, it's just they, they kind of use him the way we all think they use him. And Joe as well is able to big time them because he's Joe fucking Rogan. So he can say, I'm not doing it because the DA because there's too much smoke in the air, my plane can't land or something, or because Jamie's playing at the flipping PGA, right? <laughs> like you could just say that out of the way, and no one can say anything about it because it's flipping Joe Bloody Rogan. So there clearly, clearly, clearly is some issues going on between them. But I also like how, for whatever reason, everything that we can see from the outside is true. The fight companions aren't what they are, and we've seen it as an example with the Calabasas fight companion. The reason why the Calabasas fight companion is terrible isn't because Brendan can't reproduce a show to save his life. That obviously is a fact. But it's more so because none of those guys are friends. The whole reason why the original fight companion worked was because they were all friends. And if you remember clearly, I don't know, again, me as a former fan, because I was a former fan first, and another time Brendan turned me off, right? He didn't turn me on in that way, but you know what I mean. He turned me off. And one of the things that I realized about the fight companion early on, you can even go back to some old threads on Reddit about it. People used to actually like Brendan on the fight companion. He actually came across the best on there because it was the one time or the one place before King of the Sting started to fear Vaughn where people would shit on him, where people would like poke fun at him and he would take it on the chin and roll with it, not be sensitive and thin skinned because essentially in that room, he was sort of the lowest in terms of status, maybe above Callum, but he's kind of the lowest and money and all that sort of stuff. So he kind of does that a lot, right? He kind of judges people or acquiesces based on money and clout. So he was able to kind of temper himself in that way. And obviously they were actually genuinely friends. They'd meet up before, they'd hang out for hours before, they'd record the podcast. Sometimes they'd be staying over time after the pod, they'd say it later the next day, they'd go out for dinner. Like they'd, they'd make it a whole thing. But nowadays you feel like they probably go in do the show, leave, maybe get dinner and that's it. But it's a very cut and dry. It's not as it once was before. So the idea of them doing back-to-back -back fight campaigns that like this was never on the cards. But I did think it was going to happen because Joe is so loyal. Joe is such a loyal friend, even when, you know, it seems like he's not really being a loyal friend, that he was just going to follow through because he also knows how people are going to interpret it, like myself on the internet. But with his club opening up, you know, like, fun stuff on the horizon the last thing he probably wants to be doing is sitting in a room with Callan and Callan explaining one more time why he's not flipping doing the toeholds company and having Brendan you know pontificate about flipping podcasts I mean stand-up marketing it's not going to happen so Joe Rogan gadooshed the fight companion I think that's absolutely hilarious and I know it's eating away at them because these guys put so much value in how Joe Rogan views them and their friendship with the guy, even though they're not really the greatest friends with the guy and they kind of use him because of how big his platform is. So it couldn't have happened to a bigger, bigger, bigger redact, you know?